Well, hello and welcome to the online worship for St Mary's Church in Ely for this week. My name's Ruth Holmes and whoever you are, wherever you're watching this from, you're so welcome to worship with us in this way. Today we're continuing in a series that we're doing in John's Gospel, looking at the I am sayings of Jesus. And this week we think about the time when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Through the month of October, we're leading up to a big harvest celebration, which will be on Sunday, the 29th of October in the church. And each week of this month, we're focusing on one of our church charities. These charities were selected um, by members of our PCC, which is the kind of group of people who help direct our church. And there are four charities that look locally, but also globally, as we seek to share our resources with others and raise awareness. And this week's charity is the Children's Society. You can find much more about them on their website. Do look them up and they campaign and help support all sorts of initiatives to do with supporting children and young people. There's a little committee um, that help um, support the Children's Society here in Ely. And one of the things that they do is run a christening or service each year around Christmas time. So do be looking out for that. And later on, we'll be praying for the Children's Society as part of our intercessions. But now we turn to our Bible readings for today. The first is from Romans chapter 8 and it's verses 6 to 11. That's Romans chapter 8, 6 to 11. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 11 and it's verses 1 to 3 and then 17 to 27. So this from John 11. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. And then from verse 17, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God, who is to come into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In today's reading from John's Gospel, we have three characters to get to know alongside Jesus, of course, and they are Mary, Martha and Lazarus. 
And this family have appeared a couple of times in the gospel. So we know a little bit about each of them. And this is the kind of key moment in their story with Jesus as they have got to know him and become his disciples. It all starts with Mary. We're told in this passage in John's gospel that this Mary is the same one who poured perfume at Jesus's feet who worshipped him in that way. You might remember that passage, that narrative of, of this woman, Mary, barging into a dinner party held by one of um, the people trying to kind of make nice with Jesus and gain his favour. And she bursts in and worships at Jesus' feet in a way that would be totally um, obscene for that culture, would be against what their norms would be, would have been seen as kind of wanton and wayward. And yet she's willing to worship Jesus in that way and to to give of an expensive type of perfume at his feet. And one of his disciples says, oh, maybe that should be given to the poor. But Jesus says, no, this is a a good thing that she's worshipping me. So we meet Mary at that point. And then later on, Jesus is at Mary and Martha's house. And the set of Jesus is there for a meal and Martha is busy in the kitchen doing lots of jobs being really busy and Mary is sat at Jesus feet again learning from him listening to him and Martha complains and says well why is my sister not helping me Jesus send my sister to help and Jesus says that Mary has chosen the better thing to be sat at Jesus feet to be like one of the disciples learning and it's a it's a moment when we see that women were accepted as disciples in that way as well as men And so we have in Mary and Martha two sisters who are quite dissimilar from one another. We have Mary who's worshipping Jesus, who's pouring everything out for Jesus, sitting at Jesus's feet. And we have Martha who's worrying and busy about getting stuff done. And Mary and Martha have a brother called Lazarus. Well, then we get to this moment. Lazarus is really sick. And Lazarus is a really interesting character in the Gospels. We don't know much more about him, but we do know that he lived with his sisters, of course. And in that day and age, this is an odd kind of family setup. Usually it would be the man's house. The man would get married. And if the sisters were unmarried, they might be taken in by by the brother. But here it feels very much like it's Mary and Martha's house and Lazarus is with, with them. And so some people have suggested that maybe Lazarus had some kind of reason that he couldn't live independently. Perhaps he had a disability of some sort or a learning disability. But for some reason, he wasn't able to be fully integrated in society of the time and needed to stay looked after by his sisters. So Lazarus is someone that society would not have thought very much of in those days. Someone seen as unimportant, perhaps. We get another amazing picture of Jesus's compassion for those that society have so often overlooked. And at this point in John chapter 11, Lazarus is unwell and Mary and Martha have sent for Jesus. They've thought, well, gosh, this is really bad. We need Jesus to come and help us here. Our friend who we know works miracles. And Jesus has heard the message um, and he's stuck around in Jerusalem for a few more days. He said, well, we'll get to that. And his disciples are bemused by that. And finally, Jesus arrives. And of course, Lazarus has died. He's been in the tomb four days. And here we learn a little more about Mary and Martha, because unlike last time, when Mary was at Jesus' feet and Martha was in the kitchen, well, this time it's Mary who stays in the house. Mary doesn't go out to meet Jesus. She stays where she is. But Martha, she goes out to where Jesus is. She meets him as he's journeying in and she's really honest with him. She says, Lord, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. Where have you been? And but she says, yet even now, I believe you can do all things through God. What an amazing statement of faith. And it's an amazing switch over here that in the previous moment, it's Mary who shows that faith and that lack of worry at Jesus feet. And here it's Martha who's able to go to him and say, even now, I trust in you. Later on, Mary finally comes out to Jesus. Once Jesus asks for her, she kind of begrudgingly goes out and she says the same thing. Well, if you've been here, Lord, my brother wouldn't have died. 
but she doesn't express that same faith. And then later on, a spoiler alert, Jesus puts his money where his mouth is, as it were, and Lazarus is raised from the dead. It's a sign pointing forward to Jesus' own death and resurrection. And tucked away in the middle of it, in response to Martha, in response to Martha saying, Lord, if only you've been here, and yet I believe, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Martha has this trust in Jesus, this trust that her brother will be okay in eternity. She's okay with that. And Jesus says, no, there's more than this. I am the resurrection and the life. And so what does this mean for us in our time? Well, Mary and Martha, they were at a point of total despair. They'd given up all hope. There was nothing left to do. Death had come. They were mourning. They were being supported in their mourning. And I wonder if we've ever had those moments of feeling totally at rock bottom with nothing left to do. Having called on God and saying, well, God, where have you been? You've shown up too late. Our charity for this week is the Children's Society and they have lots of resources looking at the various injustices against children in our world. One campaign at the moment is called Look Closer, and it's focused on the exploitation of children and young people, particularly into the drug industry, into sex trafficking and the like. A thing of total despair as we read about it, as we find out what's going on, we might think, well, there's nothing left to do. And gosh, we have been praying that injustice would end, that people would not be exploited. How on earth, when we read things like that, how on earth can we have hope? And I have great admiration for those people who work in those kinds of charities and other industries where they're constantly exposed to these kinds of stories, those who work in our NHS and in social care as well, where they're bombarded with these stories of hardship and exploitation and things not being just and not being okay. And we might ask, how on earth can we have hope? We have a similar situation in our Romans passage. Paul, who wrote the letter to the Romans, had been through his fair share of pain and disaster. In one of the letters, he talks about a thorn in his side that never goes away, a constant pain. He'd been shipwrecked, he'd been put in prison. And yet he's able to say that through Jesus, that even though his body is subject to death, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. How on earth can Paul say something like that? Well, I think it draws us back to this part of Jesus's identity that we're focusing on today. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Even in the darkest depths of despair, even in the midst of exploitation and injustice and oppression, even when our bodies are failing us and we just don't know what is coming next. The promise of Jesus is that through his spirit, we can find life. And that's a hope for the future, that as we trust in Jesus, we know that even though we are subject to death, as Paul puts it, that we will live again. That's what Martha believes to her brother. But there's more than that. In Jesus's resurrection, he overcomes all that stands in the way of us and God's. He makes a way through suffering and pain and disaster and despair. He wins victory over those things. And he invites us into a way of life that won't always be easy, but where Jesus is with us, giving us the strength to endure, giving us hope for the future. So I want us to pray this morning that we would find that hope, particularly where we are feeling real despair, where that hope feels really obscured. That there might be that light at the end of the tunnel that we might see through the darkness, through the grey, through the dreariness of our lives, that we might see a glimmer of hope. And for those of us feeling strong in hope today, perhaps we might pray, particularly for the Children's Society and their campaigns, but also for others who spend their lives exposed to these stories that are so difficult to take, that they would know this promise of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life that in trusting in Jesus, they might find hope and resilience for the work ahead of them. So let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you 
that you are the resurrection and the life, that it is in you that we find life to the full and that it is through you that we will live again. So Lord, we bring before you those things in our lives and in the lives of people we know where there is despair and darkness, injustice, oppression, difficulty. As we remember Mary and Martha in their grief and the way you spoke hope to them, we pray, would you fill us with your spirit and give us hope? Would we know the hope that comes from knowing you, Jesus, as the resurrection and the life? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray in particular for the Children's Society. We thank you for all who work for them. We thank you for the work they do to bring about justice, to bring about your kingdom. And God, we pray for all those hearing difficult stories day after day after day. Would you give them your hope and your life? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our country and our world. Lord, we pray that we would see an end to injustice. And we pray that many would come to know you as the resurrection and the life that through you we would have more hope and more life, that this country would be changed by the knowledge of who you are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so let's end our time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.